Unlike other big rallies, big rallies the big rallies, earlier at about 7 a.m. a group from the post Welcome to Hashtag PH 2013. Today on Rappler. A survey shows most Filipinos support the government's case against China over the disputed South China Sea. It was not to discuss the dam or uh, to receive a bribe, but I was uh, uh, discussing with her a uh, respective uh, proper people's faction. That was about it, right? Senator Enrile admits meeting with pork barrel conduit Ruby Quazon, but denies receiving kickbacks. And a poll shows Catholics approve of Pope Francis, but not church teachings. Hello, I'm Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. A survey shows most Filipinos support the unprecedented case filed by the Philippines against China over disputed territories in the South China Sea, or what the Philippines calls the West Philippine Sea. In the December 2013 Social Weather Station survey, 73% of respondents are aware of the dispute between the two countries over the Spratly Islands. 82% of Filipinos agree with bringing the dispute to international arbitration through the United Nations. An overwhelming 93% of respondents say the Philippines should defend its territory and natural resources through lawful means. Trust in China has been negative since 2012, when tensions escalated after aggressive moves by Beijing. China uses its nine-dash line to claim the entire South China Sea, overlapping areas within the Philippines' exclusive economic zone. Foreign Affairs spokesperson Raul Hernandez says the overwhelming support for the arbitration case proves, quote, Taking a principled stance, one that is based on respecting the rule of law and pursuing peaceful settlement of disputes, strongly resonates with the Filipino people. Senate Minority Leader Juan Ponce Enrile admits meeting with pork barrel conduit Ruby Toisson over lunch, but denies it was to receive kickbacks from her in the pork barrel scam. Whistleblowers say Toisson was the conduit for lawmakers who supposedly funneled their pork barrel funds to the fake NGOs of alleged mastermind Janet Lim Nepales. After leaving the country in August, Toisson returned Friday and turned state witness, corroborating statements that Enrile and Senator Jingoy Estrada received kickbacks from the scam. In her affidavit, Toisson says she personally delivered cash to Enrile's former chief of staff, Gigi Reyes. Toison says they met in restaurants in Taguig and Makati, and Enrile would sometimes join them when they were almost done with the transaction. But on Monday, Enrile says he only met with Toison sometime between 2006 and 2007 for a property transaction. The only time that I met her is in Mamu. Mm -hmm. Mamu, restaurant, a very crowded restaurant. And uh, it was not to discuss the dam or... Uh, to receive a bribe, but I was uh, uh, discussing with her a respective uh, property transaction, and uh, <coughs> that was about it. I, in fact, I was, I was the one to arrange that uh, lunch. Enrile also says he was not worried that his former chief of staff will surface and implicate him. Reyes left the Philippines from Macau in August 2013 after the scam broke out. What, what, will, what, what will she say? I, I have faith in her uh, honesty and integrity because uh, she has been working for me for 25 years, almost 25 years. So and there has never been any occasion that... Uh, uh, she violated that mm -hmm. degree of rectitude expected mm -hmm. from a public sector. Senator Jingoy Estrada asks the Senate to release CCTV footage of Ruby Toisson's visits to the chamber to dismiss her claims that she personally delivered bags of cash to Estrada at the Senate during the pork barrel scam. Estrada makes the request three days after Toisson admitted to being a bag man for lawmakers in the scam. Senate President Frank Rulon grants the request but says it will take time to look for the video because Estrada could not give dates. Estrada says he does not remember the last time Toisson came to his office. He adds, I want to just clear the coast because I am not guilty. 
Estrada admits being close to the woman he calls Tita Ruby, a former social secretary of his father, but he says he never authorized Toison to deal with his pork barrel. Malacanang responds to Vice President Judge Marbina's statement that the testimony of pork barrel conduit Ruby Toison was a dud. In an inquiry report, Binai asks whether Toison's statements on the pork barrel scam implicating his close allies can, quote, demolish anything. In her statement, Toison said Senators Jingoy Estrada and Juan Ponce Enrile pocketed pork barrel funds. Binay, former President Joseph Estrada and Enrile are top leaders of the opposition United Nationalist Alliance. On Sunday, Communication Secretary Sunny Coloma says it's the ombudsman, not Binay, who will assess the weight of Toison's testimony. Toison is set to appear before the Senate Blue Ribbon Committee Thursday. Senators want to ask if she has documentary evidence. Former Supreme Court Justice Serafin Cuevas dies Sunday. He was 85. The Supreme Court announces Cuevas' death in a tweet Monday. Cuevas, whose career spanned more than six decades, is known for handling three impeachment cases in the Philippines. One of his most prominent cases was the impeachment trial of former Chief Justice Renato Corona, where Cuevas stood as lead defense counsel. Cuevas also handled the case of then-Ombudsman Mercedes Gutierrez, whose trial was aborted in 2011 after she resigned. Cuevas was also a justice secretary under the administration of the post-president Joseph Estrada. He became one of Estrada's lawyers during his 2001 impeachment trial. Lawyers from both sides of the Corona impeachment trial call Cuevas a legal luminary, while Malacanang offers condolences and says Cuevas is, quote, an imminent jurist and a well-respected member of the legal community. President Benigno Aquino says the Philippines and the U.S. are close to finishing a military deal, but on Monday, the government confirms a shakeup in the Philippine panel. Foreign Affairs spokesperson Raul Hernandez says Assistant Secretary Carlos Soreta left the panel to head the Foreign Service Institute. Soreta did not participate in the fifth round of talks in January. Initial press releases introduced Soreta as chair of the Philippine panel, but later statements showed Defense Undersecretary Pio Lorenzo Matino is chair. Asked if there are problems with the negotiations, Hernandez did not reply. The deal would allow more American troops in the Philippines and give them more access to Philippine bases. But talks reach an impasse after disagreements on the Philippines' access to temporary U.S. facilities in the country. Round six of the talks will be held in March. The latest tally of the Foreign Affairs Department shows the number of registered overseas Filipino workers or OFWs reaches 6.3 million, up from the 2.2 million registered OFWs in 2011. In its December 2012 tally, the Commission on Filipinos Overseas says the number of Filipinos abroad reaches more than 10 million, including undocumented Filipinos and permanent residents. In June 2013, the International Organization for Migration said the number of OFWs has been constantly increasing. Over over 67% of OFWs head for countries in the Middle East. OFWs have been a key driver of the Philippines' economic growth, with their remittances accounting for around 10% of the country's gross domestic product. President Aquino calls a meeting among government agencies to discuss road safety issues. This comes after consecutive fatal bus accidents in the past months. On Friday, a GV Florida bus fell into a ravine in Bontoc Mountain Province, killing 14 people. Just a day after this, a jeepney accident in Abra killed five people and injured 33 others. In December, 18 people died after a Don Mariano bus fell off an elevated highway. Transportation authorities suspended the franchise of the two bus companies. Well, let's now look at Rappler's Rap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number two, as the first anniversary of his papacy nears, 87% of Catholics believe Pope Francis is doing a good job. But 78% favor using contraceptives in violation of church doctrine. A survey conducted in 12 countries found Catholics in Africa and the Philippines are the most conservative, while those in Argentina and Brazil are the most liberal. At number six, on Sunday, over 50% of Swiss voters support the Stop Mass Immigration Plan championed by Swiss right-wing populists. Switzerland is not a member of the European Union or EU, but it's surrounded by EU member countries and trades with the 28-member bloc. 
One-fifth to one-fourth of the Swiss population consists of foreigners, while an estimated 430,000 Swiss live in EU member countries. With 80,000 EU citizens arriving every year, the Swiss People's Party says Switzerland must apply the brakes on immigration. Reacting to the results, the EU says it will assess ties with Switzerland. And at number 10, the immense popularity of the addictive game Flappy Bird was too much to bear for game developer Dong Nguyen. In a tweet, Nguyen announced he was taking down the game. The premise of Flappy Bird is simple, but it's notorious for being difficult to win. Nguyen says media overrated his game's success and that he now wants to be left alone. By Monday, Flappy Bird disappears on both the iOS App Store and Google Play. For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com's The Wrap. For our social media post of the day, easy come, easy go. The Flappy Bird app took the mobile gaming world by storm, but the frenzy is short-lived. Several netizens can't believe Dong Nguyen's decision to pull the plug on the highly addictive game. John Edward David speculates he doesn't like the reaction that people have towards the game. His expectations were way off reality. Naomi Corpus says can't understand the creator's reasons. Overusing? Isn't that a good thing? Well, whatever the case may be, many will miss the game. College American football standout Michael Sam reveals on Sunday he is gay and could become the first openly gay player drafted by an NFL team. In interviews on Sunday with ESPN and with the New York Times, Sam says he's going public with information already known to his teammates and coaches at the University of Missouri. He says, quote, I am an openly proud gay man, but I know what I want to be. I want to be a football player in the NFL. Sam is eligible for the NFL draft in May. If he is drafted, he could become the first openly gay player in the league's history. The NFL voices support saying, quote, We admire Michael Sam's honesty and courage. Michael is a football player. Any player with ability and determination can succeed in the NFL. Youth from war-torn areas in Mindanao find refuge in football. A group of Marines finds a way to use sports as an instrument of peace. David Lozada reports. Can sports pave the way for peace? For the past decades, peace has been elusive in conflict areas in Mindanao. Now, they are fighting the war in a different battlefield. Football. Sulu-based Marines started Football for Peace because they wanted to teach the youth of Sulu a way out of the cycles of violence and poverty. The program's founder, Lt. Col. Stephen Cabanlet, says the program has given impoverished children a crack at a decent future. Now, finishing their education and playing professional football is no longer an impossible dream. Uh, the, the medium is football, but we can go deeper. So, aside from character development, we can go into scholarship, educational program. Ang vision nga eh, uh, they will be a good football ano, and a good citizen eh. So in that way, they can help their community sa pamamaraan na dun sa nakuha nilang values sa paglalaro ng football. The campaign expanded to other provinces like Palawan, Tawi-Tawi, Cotabato, Sultan Kudarat, and Zamboanga. Thousands of balls have been donated. But with rough fields and heavy use, the balls never seem to last long. Responding to the need for stronger balls in the football clinics, One World Football and Chevrolet Philippines donates 2,400 indestructible footballs. The balls can survive the harshest environments, never go flat, and don't need to be pumped. Chevrolet Philippines President Alberto Arcilia hopes the balls will help shape the children's future. I personally believe that uh, sports always brings out the best in, in the youth, in individuals. So we will be want to just contribute in their growing up, in having direction, enjoying their being kids. The Marines are now looking for ways to support the college education of the children who join their football clinics. Hindi lang naman din bola ang pangailangan namin. Marami din kailangan din support para sa scholarship nila support para sa mga training equipment, of course, support para doon sa pag-enhance na rin sa coaching level o uh, teaching level ng Marines na magtuturo ng football sa mga bata. 
The road to peace is not easy, and Cabanlet admits there is a lot of work to be done. The Marines say this sports program is a significant step towards building peace in Mindanao. Aside from mending disputes between communities, football also teaches the children to dream. Soldiers also say they will continue to promote peace through sports, hoping to prove that not all wars are won by guns. David Lozada, Rappler, Tagig. Every story on Rappler has a mood meter which gives you eight emotions to choose from. Click how you feel and your vote comes down to the mood navigator in the middle of the front page. That crowdsources the mood of the day. It also gives you the top ten stories that have affected our readers and our viewers the most emotionally. These ten stories have gotten the most number of views on their mood meters. If we take a look today, um, this in gray, ex-Supreme Court Justice Serafin Cuevas dies. You see 87% sad. Um, the palace... Ombudsman, not benign, decides on Tuason, 76% angry. That red mirrors in the story that's gotten the most number of votes in the mood meter. Filipino Winter Olympians family mortgaged home for tickets to Sochi. This was posted just an hour or so, a few hours ago. Um, you have 31% sad and 58% angry. That red bringing out the mood of the day. Today, most people are angry. That is Rappler Snoozecast for today, Monday, February 10, 2014. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Maria Ressa. As we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today. Okay.